We've seen how to use the generate text methods with the Google Bard API, but today we want to look at candidate counts. This parameter is optional and we're supposed to assign a value to it as an integer. If you scroll down here on this guide from the Bard API, they specify that the maximum number that we can assign here is eight. So it can be any value from one to eight, and this corresponds to the maximum number of generated responses that are going to be returned. If we omit this value, the default is gonna be applied, and that is a value of one. So here I have some code, and I'm going to remove my candidate counts parameter here to begin. And again, I want to clarify here that candidate counts is used to get more options from the Google Bard API. You can think of it as when you ask a question to someone, for example, what are we doing tonight? And they give you a bunch of options. Maybe watch a football game, or we could go have some drinks, or we can sleep early or we can play a game and so on. They give you a set of options and then it's up to you to select which one is more suitable to you. This is different from giving a single answer. For example, what should we do tonight? And they respond to you, let's play a game. That is a single answer. But if you want more options to choose from, then implicitly you apply candidate counts. Of course, among human beings, we don't have parameters like this, but with the BART API being Python code and communication with a remote API, we need to specify how we want the responses to be generated. So here I have some basic setup code. I import the generative AI library in Python. It's the Google BART API. I also import the OS module in Python to access my API key as an environment variable. And then here I create a variable called response and it's going to store the response from my prompts here. So in my prompts here, I'm using the chat method. And this is to match the example I just gave you regarding you communicating with another person and requesting some options. So the best way for me to simulate this scenario is to use the chat feature from the Google Bard API. So here my message is suggest three names for dogs. No explanation needed. And then I add here, keep the answers short. If I try to run this code here, I print the response. Let's see what I get. And we have the chat response from the chat bison 001 model. And in here we have author ID zero, this is our prompt. And then author ID one is the response from the model. And the content in that response is here are three names for dogs, followed by a couple of suggestions. But look at this parameter here. It says candidates counts equals none. And then here it says candidates. And again, we have the response that got generated. And the response is here are three names for dogs, Luna, Milo and Charlie. But again, let's say I want a set of options, not just three suggestions, but I want a list of three suggestions and I want different versions of that list in one go. What I can do is go back here and say candidate count equals two, meaning that when you suggest three names, I want you to give me three names for dogs, but then give me an alternate version of that list. So I'm going to get two lists in one go, each list with three names for dogs. And now when I run this Python code, if we look here at candidates counts, it is set to two. The candidates output here for this parameter now has two elements. The first one says buddy, Charlie and Max. And the second one here, which starts where I'm highlighting inside of the outputs, says Luna, Milo, and Charlie. What if we want to print only the candidates? Well, I can actually comment this out. And instead, I'm going to use that piece of code here, which says print response.candidates. So this is the attributes or the property that we can use to extract the different outputs from the response. Let me run this code now. And now I have only the candidates outputs. So this second answer was longer than the first one, but the output was very similar. 
So to avoid this, we can actually increase the candidate's count so that we get a bit more randomness perhaps, and we can also set the temperature of the response. But we're going to look at temperatures in a future video. For now, before I increase the candidate count value, let's go ahead and print the output properly. So I'm going to comment this out, print response.candidate, and I'm going to enable this for loop here. So let me clear my the console here. This for loop here says for each of the responses that we got among our list of candidates answers, I want to access each individual answer and I want to access the contents of that answer. That is the actual outputs, the answer that I want. So let's run this code and see what it looks like. Now we have a cleaner output. This here is the first output. It says here are three names for dogs, Buddy, Charlie, and Max. And then we have the second output right below. And they say sure, here are other names, Luna, Milo, and Charlie. If we want to increase the count of answers, all we have to do is to go at the top here and set this value to a higher integer. Like I said at the beginning, the maximum number is eight. So let's put it at seven. Now, if I run this code again, it starts here. Now we have Buddy, Charlie, and Max, Luna, Milo, and Charlie, Buddy, Max, and Charlie. And it's, it's kind of very similar. You can see that the, the randomness is very few. And that's why we're going to talk about temperatures and randomness in future videos. But this gives you an idea of how to generate multiple versions of a single answer from a single prompt to the Google Bard API. So this can be useful. Let's say you have a tourism app and you want to suggest activities that users can partake in whilst they are staying in a city. If they submit a prompt, for example, things to do in a certain city, you could actually generate a list of 10 activities that they can join and generate seven different options of that list. And then each option in the list would be assigned to a single day of the week. So Monday could be candidates one, Tuesday could be candidates two, and so on. So this gives you an idea of how to use candidates. But again, you can see that Google Bard is not as rich as GPT-4, for example, that is ChatGPT, because the answers here are very repetitive. We see some changes here, such as Bailey, but the names like Max, Buddy, and Charlie keep repeating themselves. So I hope you learned something from this video about how to use the chat service with the Google Bard API and generate multiple versions of your generated answers using the candidate's counts parameter. If you like this video, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.